At his press conference two weeks ago, President Obama defended himself against liberal critics who accused him of selling out his principles for the tax cut deal. At his press conference today, President Obama declared victory for his strategy of compromise in a post-midterm election season of progress. Democrats and Republicans came together to approve my top national security priority for this session of Congress, the New START Treaty. We also overturned a 17-year-old law and a longstanding injustice by finally ending Don't Ask, Don't Tell. In addition, we came together across party lines to pass a food safety bill, the biggest upgrade of America's food safety laws since the Great Depression. And I hope the House will soon join the Senate in passing a 9-11 health bill that will help cover the health care costs of police officers, firefighters, rescue workers, and residents who inhaled toxic air near the World Trade Center on that terrible morning and the days that followed. So I think it's fair to say that this has been the most productive post-election period we've had in decades. A new CNN poll finds that 56% of Americans support how Obama has handled the lame duck session, while only 42% approve of how the Republicans have performed during the same period. President Obama's post-election reversal of fortune has Republican Senator Lindsey Graham worried. When it's all going to be said and done, Harry Reid has eaten our lunch. But what about President Obama's critics on the left? Are they finally ready to join their president on his victory lap? Joining me now are Jane Hampshire, founder of FireDogLake.com, Roger Hodge, author of The Mendacity of Hope, Barack Obama and the Betrayal of American Liberalism, Richard Wolff, author of Revival, The Struggle for Survival Inside the Obama White House, and Ezra Klein, columnist, for the Washington Post. Roger Hodge, you are the president's, I think, staunchest critic that we've found on this program on the left. Is there anything that's happened in the lame duck session that has in any way tilted you in a more positive direction toward President Barack Obama? Not really. I think that the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the uh, repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell is a, a major step forward. That's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful victory for uh, the American people for civil rights. It's a great thing. Everyone who was involved with that should be commended, even Joe Lieberman. Uh, and, uh, but, but this is not uh, a, a necessarily a, a major change in the Obama administration. The Obama administration uh, is working with Republicans, and that's not surprising. Uh, the Obama administration has a lot in common with the Republicans. Uh, the Obama administration is still poised to suggest cuts in Social Security. There are reports that uh, the president is planning uh, to introduce an austerity plan in his State of the Union address uh, that would preempt cuts demanded by the Republicans uh, in the next session of Congress. So I think in a few months we may uh, have, we will probably have forgotten all about this extraordinary lame duck session and will be fighting for uh, the remnants of the New Deal uh, going forward. So, Roger, let me get this straight. You have a kind word for Joe Lieberman tonight, but nothing positive to say about Barack Obama. No, I do. I think that he deserves all due credit for helping get this passed. I mean, he's had, he had an extraordinary session. But really, my concern is not with these uh, uh, ephemeral fluctuations in momentum and popularity. My concern really is with basic principles and protecting what little we have left of uh, a social safety net in this country. Jane Hampshire, uh, before we get to you, let's listen to what President Obama said today about the disappointed left regarding his uh, tax cut deal on the tax rates for the wealthy. I completely understand why not just Democrats, but some Republicans might think uh, that that part of the tax package uh, we could have done without. Having said that, I, I, I want to repeat, compromise, by definition, means taking some things you don't like. And the overall package was the right one to ensure that this economy has the best possible chance to grow and create jobs. And there is no better anti-poverty program than an economy that's growing. There's no better deficit reduction program than an economy that is growing. 
Uh, and if the economy started contracting, as it might have had we not gotten this tax agreement, then the choices that we would have to make would be even tougher. Jane, was the overall package the right one, as the president states? And, and if he had not made that deal, would we have gotten to don't ask, don't tell, and everything else that's been accomplished in the lame duck session? Well, we got to don't ask, don't tell, and everything else because the, uh, the unanimous consent going forward on um, the, the budget resolution blew up. And so Harry Reid sort of slipped don't ask, don't tell in over the objections of the White House, actually, who wanted to proceed to the START Treaty. But I think that there are four things that we can say without question, uh, with four things that we can look at and take as lessons in the situation. Number one, this is what it looks like when Harry Reid really wants to move something. He has many, many tools at his disposal when he wants to get something done, and he did it. Number two, it was the groups who would not take no for an answer. Get equal. The 9-11 health care, you know, the, the first responders who came here, who demonstrated, who chained themselves to the White House, who followed the president around and heckled and absolutely would not say, take no for an answer, who got their issues addressed. Number three, you've got, you, we finally see what it's like when a man with public opinion at his back grabs the bully pulpit, goes out, and tries to shame the Republicans into agreeing to something that is broadly popular. Unfortunately, that man's name is John Stewart, and that's why the 9-11 health care bill got passed. And number four, and I think this is the most important part, we saw Don't Ask, Don't Tell, uh, the food safety bill, 9-11 health care, and the unemployment uh, extension, all of which were extremely popular with the public, between 65 and 80 percent popularity, are the things that people are celebrating today. And what can we say about all of those things? Those are liberal things. Those are liberal agenda. They are not, by definition, to the left, because with 65 to 80 percent support, they are centrist. That's where the country is. So the things that liberals have been telling the president to do are popular. And the response that the country has to data these bills prove that that is something that he will actually reap a whole lot of popular support for if he actually gets out there and fights for things like this. Ezra Klein, let's go to Jane's first point, which is that maybe Harry Reid deserves more credit than anyone else in what has been accomplished in this lame duck session. I think I might be leaning toward Jane on that one. How do you see it? Harry Reid deserves a lot of credit for what happened in this lame duck session, and by the way, for what's happened over the past two years. He's held, he's held a lot of Democrats together on a lot of tough votes for them. As annoying as it's been at times, I don't think anybody's been more successful at keeping his caucus together with that large of a majority than, than he has. But I think we do actually have to spare a word here for the Republicans. These things wouldn't have gotten done, a lot of them, like the food safety bill. Unanimous consent means that the Republicans didn't say no. And what happened with a lot of these different bills, and I think this is interesting, is that a lot of these establishment Republicans these guys on the START Treaty like Lamar Alexander and the moderates on DADT like Collins and, and Brown, I think they realized that if they didn't get this stuff done now, when their colleagues came in in 2011, they weren't going to get it done. These new sort of conservative revolutionaries in the House and even in the Senate were not going to go back to sensible legislation that wasn't passed because of the election and get it through. So I do think there was a, an odd moment where these folks who had stood with McConnell when they needed to do that in order to win the election said, listen, we're not in an election right now. We got a month here. And they did it. They moved food safety. They moved defense authorization. They moved don't ask, don't tell. They wanted to legislate. Legislating isn't as powerful to them as getting reelected, getting back into the majority, but it is more powerful to them than doing nothing at all. And so a lot of this does go to, to some of them. It's a shame we can't see more of that public spirit more often. Richard Wolf, uh, I think Jane has a solid point about how much credit Harry Reid deserves, but Harry Reid doesn't need that credit electorally for another six years if he's going to run in six years. Barack Obama needs the credit right now as he begins the re-election cycle for the presidency. And in the polling we're seeing now, it looks like he's getting that credit. Policy aside, isn't this polling result exactly what the White House was angling for when they started to make the deal with Republicans on the tax bill so that they could then move on to these other successes? Sure, but it's early days. <laughs> I mean, first of all, they had to prove that they had some life in them yet, uh, that they could stage their own revival, and they've done that. But they had to build support among those independent voters, those people who drifted away. That's what the tax deal did. But that, they also, alongside the list of legislative accomplishments, you've got to see how the politics has changed here. And I'm not talking about the base and whether they like him or not, or even independent voters, just inside the beltway. Look at how the Republican strategy of the last two years has fallen apart. 
Mitch McConnell couldn't even keep his caucus together on the START Treaty. He, Lamar Alexander isn't just a, an establishment figure. He's part of his own leadership. So the discipline that McConnell had very successfully to make the president seem extremist, unacceptable, and not the bipartisan figure he, he tried to portray himself as in 2008, all of that's gone. And, and, and that's as much of an accomplishment as any individual pieces of this legislation because it opens up a completely new path to 2012 and for the next two years.